I doubt that there's a red-blooded American boy who hasn't at one time or other said he'd like to have lived back in the days of the frontier. <laughs> now, whether we would really do it if we had a chance is another matter. But at least we'd enjoy dreaming of a great part of our heritage, the Old West. Colorful, fantastic, sinister, deadly. All of this was part of the good old days. In our story today, I'm going to take you back part way to the days of the frontier. For we have a man living near Naughty Pine that's as much a part of those adventurous times as Buffalo Bill or General Custer. <laughs> but say, we'd better get into our story. Its name, Skinner Raises a Storm. There go 12 mules pulling two large wagons full of a special sand used by the Mountain Refining Company to make a particular kind of glass. 12 fine mules driven by their burly master, Skinner McNeil. Skinner is a picture of the Old West. He's a medium-sized, stocky man in his retiring years. His clothes are typical mule Skinner duds. And he wears big hobnail boots so he can anchor himself on the wood footrest of the lead wagon to drive his beloved mules. Let's join Skinner as he pulls up to the unloading chutes at the refinery. Get us in there, you lazy good for nothing What do you think this is, a picnic? Hiya! Up in there! Oh, up there! Oh, up there! Oh, up there! Oh, up there. Oh. Hey, Skinner! The boss wants to see you. Okay, Barney, after I get the mules bedded down for the night. The boss wants to see you right now, Skinner. Okay, okay, keep a hold of your suspenders. What's he want? I don't know. Ah, what's all this being fired up and hurry about? I'll go see him. Watch my mules, will you? Sure. They ain't going no place after the work they done all day. <laughs> you talk like an engine too long in the sun. Them critters of mine are just getting warmed up. That their perspiration is just like oil to them fellows. Makes them work better. You better stop jawing and go see the boss. Okay, okay. Got something to say to me, Al? Yeah, Skinner. I'm waiting. Uh, Skinner, you see these figures here on this sheet of paper? Sure, I ain't blind. Uh, do you know what they mean? <laughs> Me? Uh, you know I ain't had much learning. All I can do with money is count it. Uh, these figures mean that the uh, the mules got to go. Hmm? What? You heard me, Skinner. The mules are through right now. Well, I'll be a cross-eyed sidewinder. You mean to tell me you're going to fire my mules just like that? Yep. Unhitch them, bed them down for the night. I've got a man coming to buy them in the morning. You ain't gonna do no such thing, boss. Them's my mules, too. You paid for them, but I've driven them for nigh on to 15 years. Your dad gave me his word that I'd have a say-so when time, time came to stop using them. I've heard about polecats like you, but Skinner McNeil never thought he worked for one. Why, every load of sand has their sweat and muscle in it. They worked for you hard and never said a bitter word. This is like sneaking up on them and scalping them. Are you finished? What are you going to haul sand with? Buckets? Two diesel trucks. <laughs> I don't see anything <laughs> funny. Those two trucks will be less expensive than the mules by far. Yeah, well, let me tell you something. The mules haul sand for your dad when you was knee-high to a fence post. And he made money. You've got a lot to learn, boss. Too bad your dad didn't live long enough to teach you. And besides that, he gave me his word I could take care of these mules. He may have said that. It seems like he did, but it wasn't in writing. I'm the boss now, and I'm trying hard to respect your years of service, but don't push me too far. I'm ramrodding this outfit, and don't you forget it for one minute. Hmm. Now, can't you? Won't let me. I'll tell you another thing. Anybody who'd sell them critters after they work so hard ain't human. Skinner, don't push me too far. I'm warning you. Ha! You ain't got what it takes to fire me. But you can fire poor, helpless animals that have done fine for you. Why, your poor dad would turn over in his grave if he knew You're this. You're fired! Now get out! Men and mules are in the same class of varmints as far as you're thinking. Well, you can't fire me, because I quit. And I'm taking the mules with me. Don't you dare touch those mules! Hiya! Get up in there! Brownie, 
Somebody hit that collar. Skinner, stop that wagon. So, now you got yourself a shooting iron, eh? Well, that ain't gonna stop me, no how. You try to drive those mules, and I'll show you how this gun will stop you. Well, I ain't gonna let no young whelp like you sell my mules to the glue factory. Hey, hey! Stay away from that gun, or I'll give you more of the same. We'll see about that. <laughs> yep. Oh, <geez. laughs> You're getting what you should have had done to you a long time ago. You're gonna get the whipping of your life. I'm not through with you yet, Skinner. <laughs> Come on, you long-eared varmints. Get moving. Hi get out of there. Maybe I'm seeing things, but do you see what I see coming down the street? Oh, you see plenty fine, Stumpy. There are 12 mules and two wagons coming down Main Street. That must be Skinner. What's he doing in town this time of day? It's getting dark. Oh. It's Skinner, all right. Must be hot under the collar the way he's cracking that pole whip over the heads of his mules. Oh, 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 oh. Hey there, Skinner! This ain't Sunday afternoon. How come you took a ride this time of day? Uh, for good reason, Stumpy. I got fired from my job and I took the mules with me. Well, them ain't your mules. Maybe they ain't, but I was going to sell them to the glue factory because they ain't going to use mules no more. I mean, the critters got... <laughs> Throwed out together. Huh? You don't say! You aren't joking, are you, Skinner? No, Henry, I sure ain't. What you plan to do in town with mules? Put them up over the stable, that's one. Uh, what's Hal gonna do about this? I don't know, I don't care. First, he's gotta lick his wounds, and then he can try what he's a mind of. What do you mean, he has to lick his wounds? You don't look like you'd been in a fight. Uh, Hal threw down on me with a shooting iron, so I took it out of his hands with my whip, and... Then gave him the tenant of his life. With the whip? Why, show him. I don't think he should have done that, Skinner. You can get into a lot of trouble now. Ha! Ah. And here it comes, right now. Skinner, Skinner, don't you try to get near that whip or I'll shoot your hands. You're under arrest. Uh, what for? Stealing 12 mules and two wagons, assault and battery with a deadly weapon, and I have the warrant right here in my pocket, so don't start nothing funny. I've handled tougher mules, Skinner, than you're the likes of you. Uh, uh, what about my mules? Well, I'll go along with you over to the stables and then take you in. Climb aboard and let's get going. Ben, leave that whip alone. Climb aboard the wagon, fellas. We'll see what this is all about. So, you couldn't take the beating you had coming like a man, eh? I'd be sorry you used your whip on me. Why, you ornery polecat. Pat, you know what he told me? Said two of them there trucks do more hauling than my mules. And he's just going to throw us all out after we worked hard all these years. Any man that would treat mules the way he's going to, ain't he one? He showed ought to be tarred and feathered and rid out of town on a rail. <laughs> Sell him to the glue factory, huh? Over my dead body. His dad gave me... I didn't say we were going to take him to the glue factory. Uh, who are you trying to fool? Those mules are too old to sell as work critters. They got lots of work left in them, but nobody'd want to buy them at their age. Besides, they need to be well took care of. They got feelings too, you know. Your dad said... Skinner, why don't you admit it? You're about ready for the glue factory yourself. Get him out of here before I tear him to pieces. Get him out of here! You better go, young feller. Uh, be at the judge's chambers in the morning. He wants to have a pre-trial conference on this thing. you think you're being a little harsh on the old fella? I don't see that it's any of your business. Hey, here, you young maverick. I won't go running off at the mouth like a cheap faucet. Oh, well, certainly is our business. Well, I've known Skinner for many a year. You just don't kick old employees around like an old sack. That's for selling the mules to the butcher. Well, I ain't proud of what I think of you for that. I still say it's none of your business. I'm in business, and if something isn't making money for me, out it goes. Mr. Skinner's right. You aren't human. Henry, watch your tongue. I'm not sorry, Bill. It's the truth. Why you have Skinner arrested? You're not able to talk to him? You ask him about that. I haven't got time to stand around and make idle talk. Good night. Why, it sure is a cold keg of ice. Who said it, Sonny? But one of these days, somebody's going to thaw him out with a blowtorch. <laughs> Pat.
Pat, you're the arresting officer, I presume? Yes, Emil. I, I mean, Your Honor, I am. Ah, did the defendant uh, give you any trouble? No, sir, not in the least. He acted like a gentleman. Why didn't you try to resist arrest, Skinner? Why should I, Judge? He's a peace officer doing his duty. Besides, I, I wasn't mad at him, no harm. Just at that miserable young pole can over there that had me thrown... That'll be enough, cow- Skinner. Your graphic description of Hell's personality is your own personal opinion and has no bearing on the case. Yes, Judge. Now, what do you have to say to Hell's accusations? Huh? How's that? Hell charges you with stealing his mules and beating him with a bullwhip. Is that true? Uh, about stealing the mules, I'm not so sure, Judge. But whipping him, yes, sir, within an inch of his life, just like I promised. Why don't you think he's right in charging you with stealing the mules? Well, first of all, his dad gave me his promise I could stay with the mules even after they was too old. And second, because he wants to sell them to the butcher after all the years they've worked for him. Those long-eared critters are all I got. We've worked together for 12 years. I ain't about to let this money-hungry man do away with them just like they was old junk. I see. Hell... I have sat in these chambers for many years, and I have listened to many cases similar to this. It's my opinion that you provoked the attack upon yourself by inconsiderate action on your part. Evidently, there was a verbal agreement of some kind. You should have taken care to honor it. You riled Skinner beyond self-control until all he could think of was to stop you in the only way he knew how, because you were going to destroy his beloved mules who have so faithfully worked for him and you all these years. If the animals were sick, I'd agree that they be destroyed is the only humane thing to do. But to sell good animals to the butcher because you can't afford to keep them around isn't the answer, my dear fellow. That agreement wasn't in writing. I say the law says Skinner's to be punished for stealing what he doesn't own and for assault with a deadly weapon. Now, since he's an expert with that bullwhip, it is a deadly weapon. Isn't that correct, Your Honor? Yes, the law distinctly states it as you've cited it. Well, then I don't see what the delay is, Your Honor. Send the man to jail, and I'll be off with my stolen property. Are you telling this court how to mete out justice? Yeah, well, no, sir. I... Well, but it seems to now me Now, let that... me tell you something for your own good, young man. We have judges just for cases like this. Skinner wasn't trying to steal the mules. He tried to protect them. Skinner was wrong in beating you. But you were equally wrong, or perhaps more so, for provoking him to such violent and hasty action. Skinner, I'm afraid... And you're going to have to realize that trucks can do more work than mules. That ain't so, Your Honor, and you know it. How can you say things like that about mules? I know, Skinner. I've watched you work those mules, and it thrilled me to see the power and the strength they have. But they still can't beat trucks. And hell is a good business point. The mules cost more money for upkeep than the trucks, and they can't do as much work. That ain't true, Judge, and I can prove it. All right. I'm going to give you the chance to prove it. And if you do, I'll reduce sentence on the charges. If you can't prove that your mules are better than trucks, then I'll have to pronounce the regular sentence. What do you say? Well, that's okay with me. And thank you for being so so sensible. And what about the stealing charge, Your Honor? Well, that we'll have to investigate. And if your father did make a promise of some sort, we'll have to consider it at the trial itself. But Skinner wouldn't have taken the mules if you hadn't told him they would come to harm. You know that. Well, I I suppose I do. But regarding the charge of assault with a deadly weapon, you have to learn, Skinner, that you can't take the law into your own hands, no matter how angry you get. That's what we have judge and jury for. I can understand why you whipped Hal, and I hold that he drove you to it. But I cannot allow you to be judge and jury, or we'd have chaos. Bill. Yes, Your Honor? Uh, Stumpy. Yes, Judge. I'm appointing you two gentlemen as referees in this contest, and it'll run for two weeks after the trucks arrive. Is that agreeable with you? Uh, Yes, Judge Wilson, it is. Uh, I'll be glad to do it. So will I, Your Honor. Thank you. Skinner, you're free to go, and we'll meet here two weeks after the trucks arrive. Yes, sir, Judge, I'll be there. But uh, where will I keep the mules now? Well, that's a good question, Hell, will you uh, allow Skinner to keep the mules in your company stable? Or will it be necessary for me to issue a court order putting the animals in temporary custody of the court and stable them here in town? Oh, it'll be all right with me to keep them in the company stables. Thank you. Skinner, you jump! 
jumped off a cliff. <laughs> How's those, Tommy? Well, anybody knows that trucks can outwork your mules. Trucks don't get tired. Uh, I don't agree with that, you old walrus. You don't know the road to the sand pits like I do. One of them smelly trucks is going to have it pretty rough. Yeah, you've been to them mules here so long, you're just as stubborn as they are. <laughs> How's about you fellas coming over to the stable with me? I want to show you my mules. Best long ears you ever saw. I'd like to go. Oh, me too. Well, what are we waiting for? Hey, right, let's get them mules hitched up and going. <laughs> uh, that there is a Big Jim. He's the finest mule in the West. Big Jim sure is fine looking. Well, you must spend hours curing and rubbing them down. Yeah, I sure do, Henry. These are my boys, all of them. Why, oh, they sure look like a million dollars. I'll say they do. They're in the pink of condition, all right. Anybody can see they've had good care. You know, I can walk right in next to any one of these big, long-eared rascals, and they won't even try to kick or crowd me. Well, that tells me you handle them gently and they trust you. Uh, you ever hit them with a bullwhip? No, never have, Grey Wolf. Comes close, but <laughs> never touches. Uh, which one is the lead mule? Um, uh, Sandy here. I team him with dynamite, but uh, Sandy's the boss of the whole team. They follow him like a, like a hound dog after a pork chop. Yep, Sandy keeps the ball rolling. <laughs> he better hit the ball in this contest or you'll be up a tree. Uh, eh, don't worry about that, Stumpy. These mules will show the whole world what real power is. I'm telling you, Fred, this is going to be something to see. It sure sounds like it. Ought to make front page for the paper. Uh, maybe you ought to sort of announce the time of the contest beforehand uh, so folks can be there to give Skinner a send-off. That's a good idea. Don't you worry, old-timer. I'll give your old friend Skinner plenty of spread on the sheet. Uh, thank you, Fred. I uh, appreciate that. Don't mention it. Uh, you know, of course, that he doesn't stand a ghost of a chance against those two diesel trucks. Uh, sure, I know he can't beat the trucks. But I'll tell you one thing. What's that? Them trucks are gonna know they're in a fight. And I don't mean maybe. Well, how so? Have you ever seen Skinner and his mules hauling sand? No. Well, then you'd better be there with your glasses on, Sonny. Because you're gonna see something that'll leave you a thrilling memory for years. about this. A little bird must have told him. You ready, Skinner? Yep. Been ready for a long time. You understand the rules? Yep. All right. Uh, quiet down, folks. Now, men, the mules and the truck will start together. The first one to the road to the sand pits takes the lead. Are you ready, driver? Yeah, I'm ready. All set, Skinner? Yep. Hey Well, look down the road, all the way to the turn. Say, you're right, I didn't notice them. Look at the news photographers and the reporters running around here. Ah, this big story, human interest. This put Hal's company on map. I'll say it will. Looks like the crowd's gonna stick around for the first load to come back. Fine in a team. Hey, look at 
Look at their colors! Every last one of them is pulling with all he's got! My sight for sore eyes. I not forget this for a long time. They're magnificent, all right. But the tide will change when the unloading comes. Man, look at that teamwork, would you? Look at Skinner handle them. Skinner looks pretty silly right now. That truck came up and dumped his load before Skinner had the mules unhitched so they could dump the wagons. Well, the truck will be almost to the pits by the time the mules get moving. I think this contest is a lot of foolishness. You do, huh? I sure do. And don't tell me Skinner didn't know it. Well, there isn't a drop of love or consideration in you. If there was, you'd realize that Skinner's so fond of those mules that he'd never lose a contest as long as the animals did their best for him. A lot you know about business. Well, you've got to be hard and tough to make a profit. That's where you're wrong. I have a hundred men under my command, sometimes as many as a thousand or more when we're fighting a fire. Let me tell you that I wouldn't have held my job without showing love and consideration for my men. Yes, I've got a sharp pencil to figure expenses, and I have a budget to run my district on. But I learned one thing a long time ago. If I hit the ball for my men, they'll more than pay me back, and I can prove that. I don't know how you can get anybody to work for you when you look at them with dollar signs in your eyes. Again, I say it's none of your affair how I run my business. That's true in some respect. But you happen to be stepping on our toes right now by hurting one of the finest of the old-timers around here. You'd have so much business you wouldn't know what to do with it if you'd mix in a strong helping of human understanding and sympathy. Do you know why the newspapers picked this up and so many people came here today? Uh, just nosy, I guess. Not on your life. They came here because they realized that Skinner's fighting for more than just to win the contest. He's fighting for decency and understanding that rightfully belongs to these men of the Old West. He's the fading light and courage of the Old West. He represents the passing of an era that's helped build this great country on democratic principles. Now he's fighting for all that the best way he knows how. And he's fighting to win. <laughs> yeah, that's rich. He'll never win and you know it. He'll win this contest, Hal, and he'll win it good. You must be nuts. Well, you know he won't win. He can't beat the trucks. Nevertheless, he's going to win. Well, I guess I'm awful dumb. Suppose you tell me, Mr. Genius, how he's going to win. Did you hear the crowd boo the truck when it came in? Yeah. Well, Skinner, the contest is over. Did you win? No, but it ain't the mule's fault. They're good critters, and they gave all they had. And it's his fault. He wouldn't have won if it weren't for them smelly trucks. Them trucks, you know, don't get tired like my mules do. They're just noisy, smelly machines. You tell them, Skinner! Another outburst like that, Mr. Jenkins, and I'll ask you to leave this chamber. Uh, I apologize, Your Honor. Very well. Skinner, I gave you your chance to escape punishment for the bull whipping you gave hell. You lost the contest. So now in the trial... I've got to send you to jail for a while. Oh, I agree to that, Judge. You can send me to jail. Just promise me that my mules will get well took care of while I'm in the calaboose. I'll take that under consideration. Your Honor, uh, may I say a few words? Yes, go right ahead. If, if Skinner will um, apologize before the court, I'll withdraw the charges. Maybe sending him to jail would be too harsh. It seems, well, I... I guess I did provoke him to do what he did. Oh, I'd apologize. Um, but I'll do more than that. Me and the mules will make money for you. How do you figure that, Skinner? Well, did you notice all those people who came to see the mules? Yes. Well, there's one of them hundred-year shindigs coming up pretty soon. Yeah, the centennial. Well, I figured I could fix the wagons up like they was fresh bought and polish the harnesses and drive them in the shindig. We could put a, a great big sign on them wagons showing the name Mountain Refining Company. 
<laughs> I think it would sure make folks sit up and take notice of the company. Like that uh, big crowd that was out to the contest. Oh, uh, you mean we should uh, use the mules and the wagons as a as an advertising and publicity stunt? Yep, that's what I said. Uh, of course, uh, Stumpy gave me the idea. Well, um, now, Skinner, you promised not to say that. Mm, I never gave that a thought. Yeah, I, I, I think it's a good idea. And it, it'd work fine. And Skinner, I like the idea, too. I think it's excellent. You're one of the last of the fighters of the old West. You don't know when you're licked. And you keep on fighting just the same, regardless of the odds, and eventually you come out on top. That's the kind of spirit that built this country. I have a mind to dismiss this case and throw it out the door when it comes up for trial. Well, thank you, Judge Wilson. You're a man after my own heart. You won't have to do that, Judge. I withdraw all charges. You know, this worked out just as Bill told me it would. Oh? And what did he tell you? Well, he said Skinner would lose the contest, but uh, win the fight. And that's just what happened. Skinner and his mules became the trademark and traveling symbol of the Mountain Refining Company. Skinner raised quite a storm, and after the storm blew over, the sun came out, and it was a beautiful day. Well, see you next week for more adventure with 